This podcast contains murder and mayhem, guts and gore, adult language, and sexual content. Exactly what you came here for. All the listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. I am your mistress of the macabre, Sarah Tierra. Grab your Ouija board, light the candles, and grab your jar of human teeth, because you and I are going to escape for a bit. Pour yourself a cocktail or a glass of dark red wine, pull the window shades closed, and retire to a cool, dark, quiet place. Because right now, we delve without fear or limitations into the macabre. I'm back, 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 back again. Got more yes gods in the Vatican. I'm back. I'm feeling feisty. It's been quite a month and a half or so, but I'm back and here we are. Hello. Welcome. Glad to see you. I um, I mean, a lot's been going on, but I got really sick and I got strep throat and then I went to Mexico because I had a vacation planned previously. And then I had like maybe two or three good days in Mexico where I felt good. And then it just started going downhill again. I had to go to urgent care in Mexico. And then I came back to LA. I had to go to urgent care again for a second time in Los Angeles. And I found out that I had bronchitis and I also had reoccurring mono, which I had mono. I got mono when I was a kid. So I was like, I looked it up. It's a very rare thing that you can get mono like more than once or over and over again. And I swear to God, I had mono last year in January also. So I guess I'm just going to keep getting it. I don't really know. But I couldn't talk. Literally no sound was coming out of my mouth and it was pretty rough. But I am back into the world of the living. I'm back to working out and working and all of that stuff. So I'm glad to be back. And it was supposed to be a major episode coming out next, but I just don't have the time, honey. I, You know when you're going on vacation and so you're putting stuff off that needs to get done because you're like, ah, well, I'm going on vacation. I'll just do it when I come back. But then I was really, really sick for a long time when I came back. So it all just kind of piled up and piled up. So anyways, I'm trying to catch back up with life stuff. And so we're going to do a minor episode because they're little baby ones and I can just knock it out, get it going, get you some new content. So that's what we're going to do. And I have a story to tell you. Cynthia Covert, 58 years old, was a manicurist and a resident of South Carolina. On May 1st of 2020, during lockdown, she was visiting a client for an in-home nail appointment. South Carolina nail salons had been closed under state orders to slow the spread of COVID-19, and Covert went to the Kiowa Island home of her client, Barbara Howell. The homeowner said Covert was acting strangely, being a lot more talkative and relaxed than she had ever been at the salon. Barbara said, quote, At the salon, Covert acts very very professional, but today she was very relaxed and excited that her boyfriend was coming from Tennessee to visit, end quote. Covert reportedly arrived with a bottle of wine. After completing the service, Covert went onto the back porch of the home and spotted an alligator in a nearby pond and began taking pictures. Barbara stated that she was cleaning up the porch when she noticed Covert down by the water. A sheriff's deputy later stated, quote, she saw the alligator in the pond and was fascinated by the alligator, end quote. Barbara and her husband yelled to Covert that the alligator had grabbed a deer the other day from that exact spot, and Covert replied, quote, I don't look like a deer, end quote, and then moved to touch the alligator. Other reports use the word stroke it, quote, stroke it, end quote. So to pet it, essentially. She went in to pet it. Police reports detail that Covert began taking pictures of the reptile, getting increasingly closer to it until she was, quote, waist deep in the pond. Shortly after, Covert was pulled into the water by the 10-foot animal, estimated at 400 to 500 pounds. 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 Cynthia herself was five feet tall and a hundred pounds. If you're like me and you have no idea what 10 feet means, it's the length of a ladder, a U-Haul truck, or the circumference of a full-size trampoline, or the size of a Christmas tree. If you don't know how much 500 pounds is, it's approximately the weight of your mom. Pretty fucking big. Most sources say she waded into the water to pet the alligator, and one source said it lunged at her from four feet away, grabbing her leg and dragging her into the pond. 
I think the second scenario seems more likely than her wading into the water in her clothes to pet it. Um, but I also think it's less clickbaity. So more reports said that she waded into the water and less said that it lunged at her. But I, I mean, it seems more realistic that it probably lunged at her and grabbed her. Either way. The alligator grabbed a hold of her leg, pulling her under multiple times, as reported by Detective Keith Harriet of the Charleston County Sheriff's Office. Covert was described as, quote, very calm, end quote, while being attacked by the alligator. The woman's husband and another male friend tried beating the alligator with shovels, but the animal swam deeper, the police report stated. They then threw a rope to Covert to try and pull her onto the bank. The victim, meanwhile, did not scream. Covert was about waist deep in the water, and she stated in a very calm voice, quote, I guess I won't do this again, end quote, as they tried to pull her from the water, the sheriff's report states. The alligator took her under the water, and she released the rope. The gator then performed its death roll, a killing technique where it rotates in the water at high speed to drown prey and tear it apart. When police and paramedics arrived, the pond was calm, but after 15 minutes, Covert's body emerged with the alligator still clamped onto her leg. At this point, the alligator was shot in the head by a police officer and subsequently released Covert's body, which was brought ashore, but she was declared deceased. The police then shot the alligator four more times before killing it. Its remains were sent to the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. The alligator had lived in the pond along Salt Cedar Lane for 20 years, according to the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. There are no reports or other indications any people had been feeding the alligator, per the DNR. An autopsy was performed, but it did not reveal anything of note. Cynthia's cause of death was drowning and ruled accidental with severe wounds to her leg. Investigators asked if her behavior may have been drug or alcohol related. They asked Barbara that question. She replied that Covert, quote, came to her residence with a glass of wine, but that was the only thing she saw, end quote. This story was widely reported by trash magazines and some of them say a glass of wine and some of them say a bottle. Uh, I don't know which one it was. Covert is only the third person in recorded South Carolina history to be killed in an alligator attack. All three such fatal attacks have occurred since 2016, with two being in Charleston County. The third was on Hilton Head Island. Covert was an animal lover, often promoting fundraisers for rescue organizations and sharing stories about people and their pets on social media. She worked as a stylist at Prime Cut Salon on Seabrook Island, according to her Facebook page. Barbara stated, I know she called many of her clients and volunteered to give them a manicure and or pedicure at their homes. Maybe she needed money for herself and her rescued animals. The fact that she was so relaxed, even while being attacked, and also acting in a different manner than usual, I am very curious if drugs or alcohol played a factor in her behavior that day. This case had me dying to see a toxicology report, but I couldn't find one. Also, truly, I don't know if they do them for accidental deaths or just any death. I think maybe if it's a homicide, they do a toxicology. I'm not really sure. I'm just hypothesizing here, but possibly a mixture of alcohol and a drug like Xanax might fit her behavior that day, as well as an account for the strangeness of the whole incident. Not having a healthy dose of fear or respect for that particular animal was definitely unfortunate. That's an apex predator. I do feel sad that the alligator was shot because it was just doing what it does naturally, sourcing food, and that's all its brain tells it to do. That's what it's supposed to be doing in its own habitat that it had lived in for 20 years. So it's really sad that they had to kill it. It's also really sad that she died, of course. Um, Yeah, it's a sad and bizarre story. I think the fact that she was so calm and upon reading what her last words were, the story just kind of stuck with me. It's stuck in the back of my head. And I do want to send love out to her family. That's a horrible way to lose someone. Also love to that alligator who was just alligator that day. Rest in peace. A couple quick facts about alligators, because you know a bitch loves a good fact. The largest alligator ever recorded. Though it was never caught, the largest alligator ever to have been found and recorded was in 1890 in Marsh Island, Louisiana. This Marsh Island alligator, who measured at 19.2 feet and weighed in at 2,000 pounds, 
was killed in Vermilion Bay in southern Louisiana. If you're a dumb bitch like me, if you're a dumb bitch like me, 19 feet is the equivalent of two basketball hoops stacked on top of one another, a giraffe, or an orca whale. 2,000 pounds is six panda bears, two horses, two grand pianos. Wait, that sounds like they're all together. No, 2,000 pounds is the equivalent of six panda bears, or two horses, or two grand pianos, or a rhinoceros, or half of a car. I'm going to include photos on the website, mistressofthemacabrepodcast.com. None of the news articles have photos of Cynthia, which I think is really sad. She's super cute and honestly just looks like a really fun person. And I wanted to pay some tribute to her. She is a lovely lady. She took care of herself and how she looked. And I think she has fabulous photos. So I'm going to add those. Um, Once again, sending love out to her family. It's such a bizarre and sad incident. And I mean, man, I hope when I go, I'm like a fraction of as calm as she was. She really, she really was something else. I don't know how she did it, but damn, respect to Cynthia. The major episodes coming are true crime and they are like 110 pages of notes. So they're going to be long. They're going to be involved. We're going to, we're going to really hit it hard. Just a bizarre, strange little story that always stuck with me and hopefully you enjoyed. Um, Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Stay fucking healthy. Wear a mask, take some airborne, stay away from people. And that's it. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Full source notes are available at mistressofthemacabrepodcast.com as well as all photos pertaining to each episode. Follow along on Instagram for all the insane and gory photos that accompany each episode at Mistress of the Macabre Podcast. Please leave a five star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. It really helps the show grow and I will love you forever. And please tell a friend if you even have any. If you have topic ideas, questions, comments, animal facts, or unsettling stories you'd like to share, email me at mistress of the macabre podcast at gmail.com. Please support the show by joining Patreon. I'm just one young teenage girl writing, researching, producing, editing, and recording the show. Your support goes a long way. Bye.